the building has a lot of character. The building is a character. Yeah. And it's got its crazy unfinished corners. Yeah. So there was some there was some strong interest in featuring the building in this pop-up that we made. Everything that's inside of the windows that you can kind of peek in are either materials that the Newberry has or actual locations in the Newberry. Because it's such a, a unique and kind of idiosyncratic building that you don't know what you're gonna find when you go around a corner. And a lot of that ended up in the illustration here. Some of the more fantastical elements of the illustration came in, like the fact that there's like a book hoarding dragon and like a snake that's devouring books and this weird kind of jellyfish room. I like the implication that even the strange things that you find in the Newberry are not even the strangest things that are there. I don't think there's really a dragon in the Newberry, but there could be, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I think when I was a kid, I, I really loved books and I kind of revered them. And I thought of them as something that was kind of unreachable. You know, they were something that had to be published by someone else. And so learning that I could make them myself was kind of like learning that you could build a car from scratch. And then learning about artist books was kind of like learning that you could build a flying car. And when you're talking about flying books, <laughs> I think this is a nice moment to sort of expand this conversation into pop-ups. Yeah. Because where you have structure and image and text interplaying, it still might be fairly flat. But when you introduce pop-ups in paper engineering, you can really get dimensional and sculptural. You can really put the flight into that, into that flying book. Yeah. You know, we would meet up in like coffee shops and stuff and you would bring these amazing models and just like pour them over the table and we would take a look at them and and you would ask like, oh, do you think that we need like, does this shape need to be refined? Like, should this flap hold this or is that awkward or whatever? And then, you know, when I was working on the illustrations, I was asking you similar questions like, can I get away with changing this shape to make a cloud here? Um, like, do you think that this is distracting if I draw this here or whatever? I think we were v both very much like in charge of our, our own thing, yeah. but there was a yeah. lot of like advice that I was really glad to have your input on. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, having something then that is dimensional slash sculptural that represents the building and then dropping in a layer behind the building that is the wheel that's hiding the wheel and having all those little windows in the building so that the wheel can spin through and expose some things in the windows yeah those were kind of the two those are kind of the two key interests what a lot of those um historical volvels represented to me was change seasonal change so the fact that we could get a wheel in here that makes a very noticeable change in the building itself and brings a lot of change into the windows and the, the sky outside and everything. And because building things and constructing things is such an important part of the exhibition, of pop-ups, and of making our model in particular, uh, I wanted to kind of keep that um, a little gift for the person who made it. So even though it is probably going to end up sitting on a shelf, uh, the person who built it kind of has greater ownership or more knowledge of it than your average person does. So basically, when it's closed, it's about five inches square. And when it's fully opened out, it's dimensional and kind of shows us uh, something close to a scale version of the library, that front facade, at least. So, so having, you know, basically a single folio pop, more or less. So it's kind of intimate and you can stick it in a pocket because it's small enough for that, but you can open it up and stick it on a shelf and it's fun to look at. And, and you can still play with it because you can still turn that wheel. The way that you open it and then its kind of arms open out, that is something that appeals to me about what we landed on with the design, is that mm -hmm. the, the building itself kind of opens its arms to you. Um, mm -hmm. And it's kind of a welcoming in, welcomed to kind of uncover the secrets that you might otherwise not ever look into. Um, and that was another thing that was important to us was having secrets. If you're willing to pry into little uh, crevices and look into windows, you'll be rewarded for doing so. And then we circled back to the folks at the library in terms of making some paper choices, making some choices about who's actually gonna produce the piece, print it and cut it. Yeah, um, with your expert guidance. And then we're gonna make 5,000 of these. 
Yeah. There's gonna be a bunch of these out in the world. Crazy. You know, it's great that we were able to mass produce this one because you can tell why. I mean, all of the dyes, all of the little windows that are popped out, um, the edge part where the like unfinished wall is kind of a jaggedy line instead of a straight line. And I, I think it's those things though that make it uh, like a beautiful and dynamic and interesting piece to play with. You know, it's kind of a fitting place because it has such a terrific collection of artist books. Yeah. Uh, that folks can go and visit and look at. And um, there's such a gravitas there. I, I like the, the idea that there's even more that you'll never know about. Maybe no one will ever know about. Um, there are strange attics and strange rooms and maybe there's a stacks behind the stacks that there are stranger things in. Uh, there's just such a, a feeling of possibility and potential when you're there.